Hello everyone, after a long break from YouTube, I am back, and I want to share a quick update about that name game that I posted about a couple years ago, and address some of the questions people had. The working title now is Southward's Hero. It's a game where your abilities are the letters in your name. Most of my time lately has gone toward working on another game, while Southward's Hero is my solo side project, so while I am making progress on it, that game is still pretty far from release. But there are still some interesting updates that I'm ready to talk about now. Of the things I showed before, people seemed most interested in the level editor I was building to make this game. It's a 3D tile map system with many different kinds of tiles to fit all my different use cases. Since my previous videos, I made it easier and faster to build vertically. I also made general improvements to the tile sets themselves, especially with the textures and shaders so now they actually support normal maps and looked somewhat better. Something I didn't really address before was performance and optimization. This was because I was still figuring some of that out at the time, but since then I think I've solved the biggest problem, which was having too many tiles. With that third dimension, the number of tiles just gets unmanageable. Marking the tiles as static helps somewhat, since that reduces the number of draw calls, but that wasn't enough for me because the game objects still have some overhead. So I divide the tile map into chunks, and I bake those chunks into fewer meshes. The idea is that smaller chunks allow better culling and faster authoring of the level since less needs to be rebuilt with each change, while larger chunks means less overhead from the game objects, meshes, and colliders. So you pick some in-between chunk size that balances the advantages of each. Combining meshes like this only really works well if what you're combining has the same material, but fortunately for me, all these land tiles use the same single material. I won't go too deep into the actual code, but to bake a chunk, I loop over all the tiles in that chunk, grab info about the source mesh, its position and rotation, and I use that to create a combine instance. I then pass all these combine instances into mesh.combine meshes. For colliders, I use a straightforward algorithm where I first expand a collider in the x direction, and then the y direction, and then z, to see how much I can cover with a box collider without running into empty spaces or overlapping with other colliders. This way I can still use primitive colliders without having one for every single tile. These path tiles work a bit differently. Since my system was already grouping them together, I combine each group into a single mesh instead of following the chunk boundaries. For colliders, I actually assign box colliders to each tile prefab and then I combine them with colliders that are adjacent to colliders in the tiles immediately before and after in its path. Other obstacles and props, such as trees and grass, don't get baked. This way I can still attach strips to them. And this sums up my level editor updates. These optimizations made this tool a bit more tied to my project specifically since it makes a lot of assumptions about how I set up my tiles. So I'm not comfortable yet releasing it as a general tool that people can use for their own projects. If there's interest in that though, maybe I'll look into that and try to make it more general. But for this video at least, I'll leave it at this. Thanks for watching.